Thank you, Mark. What a beautiful morning. It's been so good. This morning, uh, I'm going to continue the theme of God's presence and how he longs to be with us. Um, and so I'm going to just say thanks to the tech guys, and, uh, and I may need your help if this doesn't <laughs> work or if I forget. Um, but these guys have been doing a wonderful job back there, and I appreciate your support this morning. Um, like Mark was saying, um, these words that God has been laid on our hearts back in January has been partnership, yes, and presence. This morning, I'm going to continue this conversation with you and with God, hopefully, about the word presence. And throughout the year, I hope that we can continue this in this forum, in our community groups, over coffee, over prayer time, worship times. I'm excited. What also brought me some excitement this past week was a phone call from my sister. I have one sister. She's an older sister, and she's super cool. <laughs> um, many of you have met her. And she lives in Calgary, and she's been through a lot. She loves Jesus, but she's been through a lot over the last few years. She is a mom of three young kids. She's uh, now 50. And the last four years, young family, her husband almost lost everything. And they had to kind of pivot and just sense his direction. What, what do they do? And so Kristen went back to work. She is in human resources, and she works for a pretty big company. Well, that went to the side. And, and to make a long story short, Recently, she was pursued by another company. She called me and she said, do you know what happened, Ryan? She said, uh, God showed up. God showed up in that interview. And I know us here when we know when God shows up. I felt God was showing up for me in these lyrics. I'm like, Martin didn't know. The worship team didn't know that those lyrics are some of the verses I'm going to be talking about today. Like, I'm like, oh, God, you're so awesome. You're so present. You're so close to us, and you love to speak. And this is what my sister said. She goes, Ryan, those things that were on my heart and I gave before him, all those things were met in that interview. And you could hear it in her voice. And it was like I was with my sister and with God, and we were at that table together, like Tim was saying, and experiencing his goodness. And this morning, there's going to be things that are just going to be reminders. Maybe there, and I hope that there's going to be some new things that will refresh your soul, that will encourage you to seek God in relationship. Like my sister said, it was a real experience, a real encounter with a real person. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are real. Each encounters our unique expression of his love for us, of this relationship with us. When I was sharing with Mark and Willem over this word, I'll be honest, I had a little bit of trepidation, and this is why. I don't want your experience to feel less than when I share some of my experiences today, and I think that was a lie, because my heart isn't to do that, my heart is to courage and to uplift you and to propel you towards the presence of God and knowing him in such beautiful ways. So this morning, as I share through the Old Testament, some verses, there's a couple verses I felt really strongly just to land on. And then after, yes, yeah, some practical ways where we can encounter the Holy Spirit. Growing up, on my mom's side, I had a great aunt. She was an evangelist. Oh, look at that. And maybe she didn't do that as she was preaching. <laughs> but I heard about God's presence. She actually came up to Peace River. She was from High River, south of Calgary. And I heard about these stories on my mom's side of these amazing, beautiful encounters, real experiences with the real God 
while she would preach. On my dad's side, my grandpa Swanson, he's from Sweden. He homesteaded just in a Swedish community close to Grand Prairie. And I heard of stories where, see, my, my aunt, it was kind of more public. And of course, she had this private and personal, intimate times with, with the presence of God and with God. But my, my grandpa, he was more of a quieter man. And I remember hearing the story of him in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, having his own language. And it was in a prayer time, and it was to himself. It wasn't out loud, but there was a, someone close by who was a missionary. And he said, he later said, he said, Alex, I, I heard what you were saying. And I'm a missionary from Tibet. And do you know that? Your language, the gift, that language that the Holy Spirit gave you was from Tibet. What do you think that made my grandpa Swanson feel like? That he was close. Oh, God is alive. He's real. This morning, I might be sharing some stories too, but I want us to, to go down through this wonderful, amazing book. This isn't a textbook, is it? No. This book encourages us. What else is going to fall today? Huh? <laughs> it's all good. I'm glad I can laugh with you. Laugh with you. Um, so, I do want to be leery and mindful of the time, um, but I do feel I, I, there's some things I want to pass on to you that were, he gave me some peace to share some things. So, this word presence, um, I'm not sure what denominational background you're from, and I'm very happy that we come from different backgrounds, and, and uh, so I just thought I would kind of tackle this word presence with, well, what does it mean when I'm present for my daughters? Uh, one, one way they know I'm present is the five senses. Ha, ah, forgot about this. Oh, I will say this. When we say the word presence, I want us to think about this too. That he's, when people say, oh, I'm present, it also means that he can, a person is with us or at hand in their midst. In Matthew 18, it talks about where two or three or more are gathered in his name, he is present. And that's the word in the midst. And the other word is that he is near. Okay, back to the five senses. Okay, my daughters. The five senses. Hear, touch, smell, sight, taste. Our senses allow us to know when someone is present. They know when I'm at hand, when I'm near. Esme, yesterday morning, I was, it was dark, I was praying, and I said, hey, Esme, oh, hey, Daddy. She knew I was near, she knew I was present, I was in the midst, because she heard my voice. I knew Thea was near me, because she decided to worship with me here, and she took my hands, <laughs> which was very special and loving. I loved it. <laughs> my wife knows that I'm near and I'm present because she can see me. <laughs> and then the smell part. <laughs> they know <laughs> when I'm around when I come back from hockey because <laughs> I smell. <laughs> um, one funny story is we used to have an outdoor furnace, and with weather like this, I'd be chucking wood in to keep our house warm. And they definitely know when I come in the house because they can smell my clothes. And they call me Smokey Daddy. <laughs> I love that. Now, taste. I just thought of this. The girls would know if I was present or close by or that I did something for them if, if I cooked them something because they certainly know that my cooking is not like my wife's. <laughs> But Psalms 34 says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. God pursues us and wants us to be present. And he uses our senses like a, like a friend to a friend or a father to a daughter. He wants us to know that he is present with us. And there's going to be scriptures about these senses, but also the gift of his Holy Spirit. Before we kind of tackle some 
of these highlights and these beautiful examples in the Old Testament and New Testament. I can't go further without saying this, and it was voiced today in that he is good. He is good. He is so good. He desires a relationship. He desires to be present with us. And maybe this is, maybe tomorrow, today it's just a reminder for us. But he wants to be present that he makes us home with us through his Holy Spirit. And he gives us senses, these senses. He gives us the Holy Spirit to know when he is present. Just some encouraging verses before I get into the Old Testament is Exodus 33, 14, 15. And we had this verse mentioned a couple times during the prayer week. My presence will go with you. This is God to Moses. And I will give you rest. Exodus 33, 19. All of my goodness will pass by. As we go through this, wonderful stories, all these beautiful stories of heaven through God, through Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, that he is good and he dwells and longs to be with us. And then we see how people respond. Like David, oh, I love David. He he inspires me. He says in Psalm 73, the nearness of God, there's a recognition of this relationship. The nearness of God is my good. Amen. Our senses make us present. Our senses make us relational. They help us in our relationships to know that we are close by and near. What did the presence of God look like in the Old Testament? Like I said, I'm going to go through these things and we need to be reminded that he is simply good, that he longs to be in a relationship with us. And it starts off with Adam. It all started with him. He makes good things. That's the original intent of God's heart from day one till now. Genesis 6, 8, Noah. It says that God walked with Noah. Did he touch? Did he feel? Did he sense? Did he smell him? Jacob, Genesis 35, 3. He answers me. He's been with me wherever I go. And then Moses, Exodus 33, 11. This was a very special verse for me. I went to school in Calgary uh, after high school, and then later I went to Youth of the Mission in Texas. And this was a verse that was very dear to my heart. Exodus 33, 11. God would speak to Moses as a friend would speak face to face. These examples are God's pursuit that he is not up there in the sky not wanting to be present with me or with you. He longs to be present. He longs to be near us. David. Oh yeah, Moses. Yeah, sometimes there's big there's big presence of God moments. I'm not <laughs> We're not really going to go there this morning, but there's, yes, in the, in the pillar of smoke, um, over the tents, going through the desert, there's that presence, a, a seeing and a recognition through our senses, through sight, that yes, okay, he is near. I see it. And then David, First Samuel 13, 14. David was a man after his own heart. Well, why? Because David loved being with him. The Psalms articulate that, this relationship between him and God. David recognized that God was in the midst through the Psalms. Like the one I just said, Psalms uh, 73, 28, that the nearness of my God is my good. Psalms 42, 8, and 11, the Lord will send his goodness in the daytime. Wait for God, for yet again I will praise him for the help of his presence. And there are times where we may not feel him, we may not sense his senses or we may not hear, or, but there's a recognition that, yes, he is near. He is God. 
If I have time, I may get into that, but we'll see. <laughs> and then Isaiah. So this pursuit from day one of his goodness, longing to be with us, also comes out through the prophets. And this is a verse that I just couldn't leave. In the Bible, we have so, there's, there's a beautiful language of senses, and, and here is another example. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy, eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen to me. Listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the riches of fare. He wants us. He wants to, de de he delights in us and we want to delight in him. Give ear and come. Listen that you may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant, a relationship with you, my faithful love promised to David. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. And at the end of this, near the end of the message, I'm going to, these are some examples of how can we be near to him while we call. I'll get into that in a little bit. But he want to show us what it was like in flesh. And he gave us Jesus. Isaiah 7, 14, and I'll give you a sign, a virgin, and we'll call him Emmanuel, God with us. Wow. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn or on your phone. I'm going to read another passage that that was on me. Oh, look at that. Look what fell. Okay. Oh, it's good to be real, right? You are with me, and I love that. Thank you. Okay. John 9, 21 to 23. There's a part of me that didn't want to actually read this because, um, and I love what Tyler shared, uh, and just the vulnerability, and, and Tim, you as well, friend, and um, just the lies. And, and I'm going to maybe share this later on, but just um, the lie that I'm stupid uh, because I had two concussions in high school back to back. And, and that's been... And some things that happened in school from a teacher that said some words that just, oof. but no, this is the word, and I confessed, and I confessed that the other couple days ago, and I repented that, that I believed in that lie, um, and so let's read this word together, shall we? Okay. So as I read this, uh, I'm going to explain some things after. John 14, 9 to 21 to 23. Jesus said to him, and this is to Philip, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works, of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he also will do greater works than, than he will do because of the Father. Okay. Whenever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Holy Spirit, and he will be with you forever. This pursuit from day one, from God, I want to continue that you see and know my 
my presence through Jesus. And now he's saying that when I go, I want that presence to continue through the Holy Spirit. How did Kristen know that God showed up in that meeting? She didn't see him. She didn't, she didn't, I think she probably felt, sometimes people get goosebumps. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody has to feel the goosebumps. But she knew it because the Holy Spirit was in her. Um, and this is a, another beautiful verse here as I continue reading. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, you in me, and I in you. He wants that relationship. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he loves me will be loved by my Father. That is relational language. This morning, as we've been worshiping, there is this constant, constant message of I love you, I love you, I love you. Experience me. I'm that good. And I I believe that I just, it's what's happening this morning. (laughs) This is great. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home in him. That is through the Holy Spirit. Paul says this, 1 Corinthians. Um, uh, sorry, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you know that you are God's temple and God's spirit lives in you? What I love is, and I'm going to get to this here coming up, but 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. It talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And as a church, we've been encouraging that here and in our community groups, in our lives. And why? Because we want to experience God's presence here, also here together. And it's a gift. Like it's, I, I, it's just a simple, beautiful gift. He loves us so much that he gave us the gift that when we have him dwell in us, that there can be outpourings of gifts such as wisdom, words of knowledge. And maybe you've experienced this before where someone has, has shown this gift of love, this, this gift of the Holy Spirit through someone, and you felt his presence, faith, healing. My father experienced that. My father had a leg that was this, where it was short. Someone prayed for him. Guess what happened? Do you think my father felt God's presence? Yeah. But my father also feels his presence. Every morning when I'd wake up, he'd have his cup of coffee, his Bible. Sometimes I'd see him have tears because he was experiencing God's presence like this. Both are equally beautiful. Amen. Other gifts, miracles, distinguishing spirits, languages, interpretations, helps, administration. There's many gifts that he gives us. He gives us gifts because he wants to experience that good pleasure. He wants us to be close to him. Simple as that. that? Yep, did that too. I'm a little bit behind. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe for another time, but the, the story of, of the two prodigal sons in Luke 15. And one, uh, this is the other story that I felt compelled to share, and that's, you have one son, but the part of the story is, what I want to share is, okay, so the the one son, he he wants his inheritance, and he spends it all, and he wastes it, and and he comes to his senses, and he realizes there's a repentant posture, and a long way off, he sees his father, and Jesus is, is sharing the story, this is in Luke 15, 
to a wide range of people. If you read in, the, in, in chapter uh, 15, verse 1, you had the disciples, you had the Pharisees, you had the sinners or the, the tax collectors. So he was saying this for everyone to hear and an encouragement that, look, I want you to repent and come close to me. So the father in the story is Jesus sharing. It's a long way off, and the father runs to him and embraces him. But the part that I, that I was landing on was the other son. The other son was, was mad. He was mad. He was focusing too much on what was happening between the son and the father, that sometimes it can be a distraction. He wasn't feeling the love. He wasn't feeling his father's presence. or He didn't feel that he was close by. And, and I like what the father says in verse 31. Son, you always have been with me. Sometimes I get distracted. If I'm playing chess on my phone, and I've said this a couple of times up here, like, hello, Ryan, where are you? Like, I get distracted. I don't realize that I'm in the presence of my wife. Shame on me. Um, expression. I'm not actually encouraging shame. Okay. Um, um, but this is a good reminder for me as I was reading this in verse 31, that son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. And didn't we sing that today? All that is mine is yours, worship team. Wasn't there a lyric in there? Oh, I was like, yeah, right on. God, you're speaking to me. Woo! <laughs> um, okay, so here are just some, some ways to not get distracted so we can enter in and that, that maybe we can experience his presence through the Holy Spirit, but maybe even through our, our senses. Okay? And I had to apply this this week. Like, I just said, God, I, I, I need to know that you're, you're with me. I know you're here, but boy, I'm being distracted. My thoughts and that lie that I shared with you about, like, ah, I'm going to stumble through these words and da 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 um, So I, yeah, <laughs> but he refreshed me. And I knew that he was close by. How can we know that he is present? How can we enter into his presence? however you want to say it. How do we know that he's nearby? He's at hand. John 14, 23. Love him, follow him, and he'll make his home with you and that you would believe. You need to believe that he is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you and that he has taken away your sins and that he wants a relationship with you. Believe. John, 1 John 3, 23, 24, that we believe Jesus and we love one another, just like Jesus did, who keeps his commandments. He remains in him and he in him. We know this by the spirit that he has given us. When we say yes to him, he can give us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Acts three nineteen. And we see this with the, the prodigal son, the first son. Acts 3, 19. Repent and return so that your sins will be wiped away. He can do that because he loved us so much. The father sent his son and that his son has given us his Holy Spirit in order that we would have times of refreshing. Repent and return so that the sins will be wiped away. Daryl, if you just... Go to him and ask him, what are those things, God? Well, okay, I repent of that. I was believing that lie today that, I, that I'm dumb. That's a lie. I'm talking about me. Um, and that the presence of the Lord will come. Ask and call. Psalms 140. Oh, this is what happens. When I repented, it was like my, my daughters, they share an iPad. And they had so much storage on there that it can do nothing. And so we started deleting some things. It was almost like, like we're getting rid of those things. And so when we repent, it kind of frees up, frees up our heart. 
It, it makes us free again. How's that for analogy? Okay? Yeah. It was cool? Thanks. Okay. Um, not that <laughs> It helped me. Hope it helped you. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Um, ask and call. Okay, we're getting near. Um, Psalms 145. The Lord is near to all who call. Jeremiah 33:11. Bono's one of Bono's from YouTube's favorite scriptures. You know, call to me, and I'll answer you, and I'll tell you things, wondrous things. He's a God that loves to communicate, that we would hear Him, hear Him here. Sometimes audibly, but sometimes here in our spirit. Brokenness. Man, when we repent, when I repent, I feel broken. But I feel his presence close by. Sometimes there's, I love this, what David said in Psalms 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite heart. He won't despise. He won't reject us. He won't leave us as, a, as an orphan. No. My friend recently shared with me, he did a fast, and, and he didn't get into depth of it, but he seemed refreshed. Joel 2, 17, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart with fasting, weeping, and mourning. I once fasted in college, and he showed up. He showed up for me in a dream, and it was like he was around the corner, like, I, I just, I was being distracted by things in college, and I felt like he wanted me to actually give up watching TV, actually much music. <laughs> it may sound funny, but I, I loved watching music videos. I love music at, at that time. And I felt I was supposed to kind of really separate myself from that kind of thing. And in this dream, during this fast, he, he showed up, and, and it was as if I was in a worship time. And in this dream, I felt he was right around the corner in this dream. And I can't tell you, but, but I know that I know that I knew that I knew that he showed up for me. And he gave me a hunger and thirst to pursue him all the more. And lastly, and there's, there's, there's so many different ways, but here are just things that I just want to encourage you with. Silence and solitude. And this is something that I've been trying to practice um, in times of brokenness uh, that I've been, um, that I go to him. In Psalms 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God. I'm putting down my phone. Sweetheart, I'm going for a walk. You go for it, Ryan. Sometimes I'll listen to music. <clears throat> but I'll go for that walk saying, God, you are good. Sometimes it will be like, you're the creator. I see your goodness. I recognize this. Some things he'll lay things on my part and say, you know what? You need to go back to that person and talk to them. Because your storage in your heart is, is preventing me from kind of refreshing you, and you experiencing how good I am to you. Conclusion. I think you're getting the conclusion. He just loves you. He wants to be with you. One way I was experiencing his, his presence today was just simply praising God with you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you, Tyler, Tim, for being obedient. And encouraging us to experience his presence. God gives us senses. He's given us his Holy Spirit so that we may experience his relationship, our relationship with him. We're actually feeling his presence. And sometimes we don't feel him, but he's still that good. and He's still close by, but we can still call on him. He knows what we just need. He knows. He's that good. Look at that. Amen. Okay. There's my message, guys. But um, I, I'm going to end it off that, on that note. Um, I'm going to ask the worship team if you guys can come up and worship with us. And I think what I'll do is I'll just pray as the, as the team comes up. If you're able to, if you're able to, if you feel you need to rise or stand or sit, that's fine too, or dance. I like that too. And I'm sure he loves that as well. 
Father, I just want to recognize that you are, <clears throat> thank you for tearing down strongholds in our lives. Thank you that you radically love us. Like that one song says, your love is wild, that you want to lavish your love. From day one, you are good and you're still good. And those things that hold us back from, from knowing you more, from enjoying you, from from experiencing you through the senses or through your Holy Spirit. We come to you this morning and say, we ask you, speak to us. Give us a special, unique, something that we just need. And I pray that, and I ask you that, whatever is you would remain, whatever wasn't you would, would fall to the ground that my friends here would be encouraged and compelled to seek you with all their might and all their being. Thank you for loving us. We love you. Hear that good. I love you.